Welcome to IFAS's Dialogues on Democracy. I'm Lawrence Green, Multimedia Officer at IFAS. I'd like to welcome Andrew Reynolds, Professor of Political Science at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. He recently visited IFAS's headquarters to discuss transgender and gender variant candidates and elected officials around the world. Let's get started. You recently co-authored a paper for the LGBTQ representation and rights initiative at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill titled Standing Out. Uh, transgender and gender variant candidates and elected officials around the world. Tell us about your research. We found that there had been no good study of transgender identifying people uh, running for office, where they were running, what they were running for, and their chances of election success. We knew that transgender people were one of the most um, discriminated against, penalized, marginalized communities. And uh, we also knew from our work on lesbian and gay politicians that visible presence mattered greatly to um, improving laws and improving degrees of tolerance. So trying to combine those two areas together, just understanding the numbers and understanding the world of uh, the universe of transgender politicians and seeing whether those people were able to make an impact in local government. What advice do you have for transgender people considering running for office? Historically, a lot of transgender people have been nervous about inserting themselves into public spaces because of discrimination against them. Being front and center as a very visible um, leader in the community has been a dangerous thing. Transgender candidates are able to be elected if they have a local base, if they're familiar to their local voters. Um, and that also suggests to us that parties, political parties around the world, shouldn't be quite as nervous about running candidates who happen to be transgender. They shouldn't think that those candidates stand no chance of winning. Because clearly, a strong, charismatic, successful transgender person is able to win a local council seat or um, a city-wide seat or a village mayoral election. They are able in many parts of the world, not least in South and Southeast Asia, to be successful if they're given the chance. It is about political parties. It's about access. But it's also about allies seeing it as a priority. You mentioned that, according to a poll, uh, more people have said they've met a ghost versus a transgender person. Can you elaborate on that? So 18% of Americans say that they've met a ghost, and 16% of Americans say they've met a transgender person. 90% um, of Americans today say that they have a friend or family member or colleague who is openly gay or lesbian. The important aspect of that number is that we know that support for gay rights tracks very closely the number of people who say they have a friend or family member or relation or, or colleague who happens to be gay. So familiarity, um, presence, empathy, understanding is a huge part of how change happens. So when transgender people are not known, they're not visible, then people don't empathize in the same way and pernicious anti-trans laws as we're seeing across the states today are much easier to pass. Now, why aren't transgender people visible? They're not being seen because they're hiding. And why are they hiding? Because they're bullied, they are harassed, um, they are assaulted, they are treated by the police and teachers and others as a underclass so if we start to respect and love and be kind to transgender people, they will start to become more visible. And we've seen in the evolution of gay rights that that has been the biggest driving change for improving gay rights and laws in our country. And we would hope that visibility will also drive change in transgender rights as well. Well, thank you very much, Andrew, for participating in this podcast. We look forward to working with you and reading more of your work in the future. Thank you.